Welcome back to the Atlanta Showdown Kickoff Classic kind of preview here. A big game in Atlanta, obviously, Florida State and Alabama. Tony Sakalas to my left, BamaInsider.com. Gene Williams to my right, WarChant.com. I'm Jeff Cameron of ESPN Radio. And let's talk about containing these two dynamic quarterbacks and their special gifts. I'll start with you, Tony. Jalen Hurts, obviously, a huge dual threat quarterback. And how big will that be in this football game? I think you're looking at a guy that almost had 1,000 yards on the ground last, last year. He's only going to get better as a sophomore. The real question will be, I think Alabama's going to, how, how much they're going to use him in the passing game. So maybe maybe they run him a little bit less, but they're still going to take advantage of that of those legs. He's a guy with, you know, 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, speed, and he, and he can move with the ball. He looks like a running back when he runs with the ball. It's not just it's not just speed. He can find, he can hit holes. He's, he's last year, he, arguably Alabama's best running back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also as a quarterback, but with the ball in his hands, he's, he's electric. And I think that uh, he'll definitely be utilized. Uh, there aren't too many guys you watch, uh, not just with that dynamic as a runner, but the ability to run between the tackles. He's obviously can hurt you outside. He's a big kid, too. He can shift. He can cut. You, yeah. you saw him in the national championship game, cut pass on that, that what was going to be the game-winning drive. He, yep. he also did that against LSU. He also has a just a knack for big moments. I mean, he, he's had games last season where – it, he didn't really perform well, but in that, the moment when the game needed him, he, he stepped up. So it'll be interesting to see how much he progresses, but uh, he's definitely somebody, if the game's on the line, you kind of want him on your side. DeAndre Francois is a kid that proved his toughness again and again and again last year. He's also a dual-threat quarterback. Now, they want him throwing more than they do running because of the backup situation at Florida State. But talk about how dynamic DeAndre Francois is for Florida State, Gene. Yeah, I really think he's the best true dual threat quarterback they've had. Maybe going back to Charlie Ward, you can talk about, you know, Jameis Winston and Ponder and EJ. And those guys could run. They were decent runners, but he's really got that more top end speed. I think he's more natural as a runner. Interesting, going back to last season, he was really, I think, kind of almost underutilized. And maybe that's because Jimbo Fisher wanted to get him to know the concepts, really understand the offense before he did too much in the running game. But I think, because he only had 198 rushing yards last year, which kind of surprised me it was that low. But I think you're going to see maybe more in this game because I think you got to keep him on the move because of that offensive line going against the defensive line. And I think to keep Alabama off balance, too. So I think you will see him maybe run a little bit more. Like Tony said, maybe Jalen Hurts throws a little bit more than he did last year, and maybe DeAndre Francois runs a little bit more than we saw him last year. What would the defensive game plan, defensive game plan look like for Alabama and slowing that aspect of it down for DeAndre Francois, Tony? They, you know, they've had trouble with some, some running quarterbacks, so it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it. Uh, they have a lot of new faces at linebacker, you know, so they're going to have to have uh, – they're not going to – Gonna have to provide a lot of pressure, but also have those guys that can kind of spread out and cover. Uh, you, you see Nick Saban kind of throw around different packages, and, and there might be some guys that kind of play in, in the nickel formation. You got, you got guys like uh, Rashawn Evans, who's a guy that can pass rush and he can kind of guard on the perimeter. That should be a, a big key in towards stopping an athletic quarterback. Um, I think a big key though is to get pressure on him early and, and kind of force him into the situations, kind of have the pocket collapse around him. Slowing down Jalen Hurts, Gene. Mm. Uh, listen, I think anybody watching this who's rooting for Florida State or pays attention to college football closely realized this was a bugaboo for Florida State. Uh, and if you don't believe it, just go back and watch the atrocity that was the Louisville game a year ago. But it, it's not just uh, an, an, an offensive attack like Louisville. Florida State's had problems here. The good news is they have a lot of experience going against you. You talk about Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson, probably the best two dual-threat quarterbacks in the nation last year and they get winning against them both so they've got a lot of experience going against those guys the bad news as you alluded to jeff they were pretty much shredded in those games especially against lamar jackson what i think is how do you handle this situation this year they've got the bulk of their front seven back i mean other than obviously demarcus walker big loss so i think having that experience will help initially in those kind of situation to contain them. So i think that'll be the initial game plan if that doesn't work so well early on, I think what you do, and you, you would rather him roam and do other things, but I think Derwin James could be a guy. You could have him as a spy because I think he's a guy that can keep up with Jalen. He can deliver a little punishment to him, maybe have him think twice about running the football. And here's another factor, Jeff. Who is missing for the first half of this game? It's maybe your best tackling safety, and that's Trey Marshall, who's been suspended because of what happened at the end of the Orange Bowl. That questionable targeting call is costing FSU a little bit. So another option you might have to contain Hurts may have to wait to the second half. I think everybody's really excited about the idea of Derwin James. Well, really, Derwin James against anybody in Alabama's backfield. But that matchup in particular, since we're talking quarterbacks, if Derwin James yeah. has to act as a spy, and I suspect he might, that matchup between he and Hurts is, is all-time good. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, you root for these kinds of things. Yeah. You get it first game of the year. Yeah, you could be. That could be an NFL versus NFL matchup if you look. Yeah, in down the, the road. Yeah, and then yeah, down, down the road, road a little bit. Be, so uh, it be a, a lot of fun. They have them roaming around the secondary, doing other things and creative that they could contain without. I think that would be the best case scenario for FSU. But you're right; they may have to go to that. Well, and the fun thing is they can use him anywhere, and they'll move him around. So there'll be a lot of times yeah. where he doesn't have to do that, and he is in coverage, or he shifts out. But he can be also rush off the edge. He does that so. a lot, yeah. And they do want to involve Hurts more in the passing game. So if he does try to, you know, if he is responsible for having to spy Hurts, and that opens up some some yeah. creativity in the passing game that Alabama can maybe try to expose. Isn't that, by the way, since we're on that subject of containing quarterbacks, I think it's important to address this. We know Hurts can run. He was inconsistent as a passer. If he's better down the field and making teams hurt for stacking the box to stop the run, Alabama's offense becomes a juggernaut. Right, yeah. I think that Florida State would be almost fine if Hurts had a good day on the ground and, and then didn't, didn't, throw didn't do much uh, in the air. I think where Alabama's going to hurt him is, is if he's able to do both. I, I don't know how you stop him if, he, if he's able to do both. you got to take away the running mm-hmm. aspect of it, though, I would think, and make him throw it. Well, that's the thing early on. I think FSU's game plan will be that front seven. Let's hopefully go base. Hopefully that's enough to at least contain him. Because, like Tony said, you don't want them throwing the ball downfield. I, I saw their spring game where they have over 600 passing yards. And I know that's not always a reflection, but, boy, they were they looked much better in the vertical passing game than I saw last season. I think they'd be very dangerous if they get that going. That's a, that's a tough challenge. When we uh, come back, one of the great times here, we'll get a game prediction and we'll have a chance to compare the two head coaches, which uh, obviously Nick Saban is in the conversation for greatest college football coach of all time. And Jimbo Fisher worked for Nick Saban, and uh, the two have – Great admiration for one another, so it's a fun comparison to do, plus the game predictions. That'll be the next time we come back to preview the Atlanta Showdown and the kickoff special.